Good, so uh, genetics was mentioned a couple of times uh, in the past half hour and uh, James has a question here, actually it's more two questions but I'm just going to read it um, in full. So he says, I'm taking this class in conjunction with a genetics, genetics class and I was curious how much the advancements, advancements in gene sequencing are affecting your field. Do you think many new illnesses will be treatable using genetic procedures such as gene therapy or uh, antiviral immunization made in a lab at the genetic level? Yes. You can you elaborate? <laughs> I was going to let other people chime in because I could talk about this for a long time. It's you. It's yeah. definitely your, your expertise. The, um, it's, a, it's a fascinating time to be studying uh, any type of disease. So the example I think of the um, are using gene sequence data, and this is whole genome uh, sequencing data, is probably most um, well documented for cancer therapies, where it, very simple things like the um, understanding the genetics of the in an individual on how drugs are metabolized means that we can dose patients correctly, okay, and maintain drug levels, and it's making a huge difference in um, in the responses because either drugs are not cleared as fast or they they may be um, uh, moved into tissues where they're not effective against the, the cancer. So definitively, yes, I think there's also some wonderful work in cancer therapies where um, uh, certain types of cancers that are very resistant to treatment, if you have the right genotype, they can be treated now in fairly remarkable recoveries. But in relating to infectious disease, I mean, we have this discussion on um, what constitutes good, effective, long-term immunity. And that's genetically determined. It's not always genetically determined because the environment in which those cells are proliferating are also important. But there's a large genetic uh, component to that as well. And I suspect that um, it's, a, it's not an easy problem to solve, but that there'll be quite a bit of um, emphasis in this area in the, I mean, there is right now, but we'll actually have some definitive information in the, in the very near future on this. Another example where it, you, you can really see genetics being incredibly powerful <coughs> are infectious diseases of plants, because if it is true that it's genetically determined, which it is, you can genetically modify the plant and give it a very, very robust immunity. And we're seeing this particularly with uh, a technology which is called RNAi, which is RNA interference. So essentially a little blocker which will prevent the parasite, be it a virus or a fungus or, or, or a nematode worm, doing its business by the plant expressing this little molecular uh, switch which goes in and stops the parasite reproducing or transmitting and that's an incredibly effective technology which is wonderful for its ability to be very precise and only target that parasite. So there's a really great example where we could genetically engineer immunity but in plants rather than animals. No, I think animals as, as well. Some mm. of the first use of, of gene therapy actually, viruses of course, remember they're obligate intercellular parasites and even for viruses that um, don't have a good persistence mechanism, mm. they can bring in a gene with them that a host may need. Mm. So some of the neurological diseases which are due to the absence of a, an essential a protein or a, some, some functional aspect of, that's missing, we can introduce the, the gene yep. using viruses or virus vectors. So that's, that's an old technology. I think one of the, somebody uh, was discussing as well, why don't we use viruses to fight other diseases? And of course we do use viruses in cancer therapies as well, because one of the responses of a cell that's infected is to kill itself, is to undergo apoptosis, and that's exactly what you want to happen uh, for a cancer cell. So these are not new therapies, but they'll probably become a, a bit more sophisticated over the, as we learn a little bit more about the genetic mechanisms. I guess another thing that's revolution, another bit of the technology that's revolutionizing the field quite a bit is that there's certainly a, a whole large number of both viruses and uh, path uh, and the infected bacteria that we kind of didn't even know existed because they were bacteria that 
maybe couldn't be called in before and so so uh, you know there's the the massive opportunities to gene sequence everything and and, and, <laughs> and find everything you know, to do with uh, exploration is just shown that you know, world of infectious diseases is you know, ten times as large as we used to think it was so. mm -hmm.